Sunday, March 24th, 2014. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, we're back from Anime Boston, and we're talking about internet services that are dead. What to do about it? Let's do this. So a while ago, a beep started happening in my apartment. Oh, wasn't it the Fios thing? It was the Fios thing. But uh, for a while, you know, Scott pointed out that I opined at length on multiple Geek Nights episodes in the past that the best way to annoy someone is to make a device that intermittently beeps and is self-powered and hide it in their apartment. It's called the Annoyotron. Think Geek sells it. Exactly. So I investigated and pretty quickly discovered that my Fios had, it's, it has a backup battery and that it battery has to. had died. Uh, yeah, so here's where it gets complicated. So... I silenced the alarm because I didn't give a fuck and I'd deal with it later. Uh, I've heard it go off, though, recently. uh, Yes. What I confirmed is that everyone else's Fios batteries in this building appear to also be dead. No. So it's beeping in other apartments as well, and none of those people probably notice it. Mm. That's my guess. So I googled around a little bit online, and a lot of people are having this problem, Uh, both that their neighbors don't know and aren't replacing the battery, or they try to get the battery replaced. And guess what? Verizon won't replace it. You have to pay money and buy your own battery. Okay. That's hidden in the Fios terms of service. So if you have Verizon Fios... Shouldn't you just recharge that shit? uh, Yes, but it's like a UPS. Eventually those batteries stop working. It's only been there not that long. Since 2009. It's not that long. That's a lot. You realize, Scott, UPS batteries are usually warranted for one year. Yeah. So, it's yeah. Awful. So, uh, I have to buy a battery, but, but I'll do that later. So, at work today, we're in a conference room, and I wasn't in on Friday because of and Anime you heard Boston. It did. I heard that did. No one noticed it. So, I just waited all day. It happens every now and then. No one notices it. So, finally, I asked everyone Did anyone else hear that beeping noise? Nobody. They probably bad hearing. Uh, yeah, I'm convinced that nobody has good hearing except me. We, maybe we're the you. only we, like we're the only people who can like hear the TVs. They go. Dee. Oh my! I remember that experiment. We did the single blind test of can you hear the TV? That old TV, the 74 color RCA. And I recall that both of us could hear it outside with right. the door closed. It's like we went outside the room and we said, "All right, you don't tell us if it's on or off, right? We'll tell you if it's on or off." And we're like, "It's on. It's yep. off." They turned it on and we said, "It's on." <laughs> and they turned it off. We said, "It's off." And then it's like it was up to them to decide whether it's on or off. And you know this works. This is a good test to do because, uh, like those people who say they get Wi-Fi sickness, do the same thing. Say, all right, go in the other room where you can't see, and I'm gonna turn the router on and off, and you tell me whether it's making you sick or not. Yep. And they won't be able to tell you the moment you turn it on. Even better, if you tell them you turned it on, they'll start faking all the symptoms. Yep. Uh, so yeah, if you have FiOS. Go check and see if or the- any. Actually, this will be the same with pretty much any sort of fiber service. I just don't know if other services besides FiOS might just replace your battery and not be assholes. Uh, I don't think anyone else will replace the battery. You know either. what else you could do, right? Is you could just go buy a bunch of the batteries and re- go around the building selling them to people for a lot of money. I could put on overalls and put a name tag on that doesn't actually say I'm from Verizon's it FiOS. It says Verizon. No, Moose. no, it says. I'm a fan of Verizon Fios. Uh, That's free speech. Sure. <laughs> Just trademark infringement if you got their logo, though. Yeah, if I use it with for purposes of defrauding and to... Because you can put you can use a logo for fair use in certain But the thing is, you too. actually wouldn't be defrauding people. You would just be... You're selling them the legitimate battery for a legitimate problem that they do have. Yep. And for a actually reasonable helping price. Them. You're just selling it... For an overcharge, $70. which every store does. I mean, every, that's what stores do. You're basically being a store. So what's illegal about that? Yeah, door-to-door salesman is coming back. Right. So kids, if you have Fios, go check and see if a big red light is on that says replace battery. If it is, and you didn't know that until now, your hearing sucks. Mm. Yeah. Yep. You should go get a hearing test. I mean, just in general. Every, it's like people go get eye tests, even if they don't have eye problems. Right. Yeah, because you might not know you have glaucoma. Like, like, like I was, for real. I, yeah, I was talking actually with the uh, chair of Connecticut in Anime Boston because like he, his uh, his wife told him to go to the eye doctor even though his eyes are awesome like mine. Yep. And it's just like yeah, but who gets a hearing test? Even if you go to get physicals, like when you're a kid and you go get physicals, they always give you the hearing test. Like which ear did you hear that in and shit. But adults tend not to get hearing tests, and 
you should probably get one at least once in a while, every few years. Or what something. I don't understand really is why my hearing is still so great because uh, I've abused my ears quite a bit. I've over abused the years. them moderately, but I'm, it's like going in the subway, that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, know? I wear. Well, you realize now for the last since we moved into help. the city, I wear my edematics when I'm in the subway yeah. every day. Edematics help. Yeah, but yeah. But seriously, like I, I think played... other people, it's like we, yeah, it's like we abuse our ears somewhat. We go to a concert once in a while. We listen to a loud music once in a while, right? But the other people are like the people who have bad hearing problems are really who, oh, who don't have it for some other reason, right? The people who physically damage their ears with loud noise, they are doing way, way worse than we are. It's like we're doing it in moderation. You know what? It might be genetic. They're like, ODing. It might be like the thing where if you make it to... Yes, I am. We already know I'm genetically superior to everybody. <laughs> we don't well, need to remind Scott, everyone with of your, that. With your double veins. That's right. Your double veins. Scott's double veins, I, ex- I got two sets of veins in case I get... <laughs> I won't get a heart attack in the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, based, like our friend Pete, like he went... To get hearing testing, and they were like, "Yeah, you have hearing loss." Well, he in all knew these he areas. was. He knew he was like almost deaf yes, in one ear. But you know what happened? They gave him a hearing aid. And it's you know an what? awesome hearing aid. It transformed his life. It's got like Bluetooth and shit. And so in general, my and advice you can also to you, turn people off. You'd be like, "Oh, I feel like being deaf again. I don't have to hear your yapping." Off. If you're a nerd, uh, you should try to augment your senses if you can. If you have kind of okay vision, why not have perfect vision? Yep. If you have kind of okay hearing, why not have perfect hearing? If you're poor and Obama didn't help you with his Obamacare. Yeah. Well, so at least know that you have a <laughs> bad hearing. And Buy bad some bootleg hearing aids from China. Move to Europe where they have universal health care. Something like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so news is. So news is. Uh, you know, up until now, I mean, you know, it's it's not uh, you know, a secret like that we are anti smoking and such. Yeah. Right. Uh, now again, just to be very clear, I don't care that it's bad for you. <laughs> I only care that you smell like a dead rat. I also care that it's bad for me if you smoke near me. Ah, uh, but bad for me does not bother me as much as smells bad. Both of those bother me, and it, but it's like if you were just hurting yourself and not hurting me. I wouldn't give any fucks. Look at all the zero fucks I give, <laughs> right? Which is why, until today... Never divide by the number of fucks I have given. Until today, I was super like, yeah, e-cigarettes, awesome, because that means someone can, if they want to be stupid and poison themselves... Um, I know what your news is. They can poison themselves, and they won't be poisoning me. They're just spraying water vapor around, no problem. <laughs> well... Well, it turns out there are two newses here. News number one, not really a bad news. News number one is simply that... There have been quite a few cases, over 1,300 cases in 2013, which is an increase of 300% uh, of people who just took e-cigarette chemical and like drank it or some shit and crazy poisoned themselves. Yeah. Because that shit is basically almost pure nicotine. You know what? You know what I blame this kill on? You. The people who use drugs, like perhaps marijuana, they know a lot about their hobby usually. Mm-hmm. So they understand about concentrates right. and hash oils and resins and whatever. But guys who smoke cigarettes already don't really have a good grasp of causality mm-hmm. and already don't really recognize that nicotine is a straight up poison. Right. There has only been one death since 2011 because of this. Uh, someone who killed themselves by injecting it on purpose. Injecting it? Right. Uh. But there have been a lot of people, for example, one person, according to this article, had some of it spilled on them, and it absorbed through their skin, and they had had cardiac problems immediately, pretty much. I can believe that. They didn't die, though, but, you know, that's not good. Yep. So I've also read a lot of stories about people basically ODing just because right. they don't know how to set the dosages. They don't read the manual. Sure. I mean, this stuff doesn't really bother me. So much. I mean, like, Drano, which Rim just bought, is super dangerous. Yep. Right? But I guess it's not that dangerous that you pour it on your hand and you have cardiac problems. You just burn your hand. Yeah, really badly. But if, you know, I'm ha- afraid of Drano. Don't get me wrong. People have always been getting hurt by dangerous chemicals in the home, right? We already know how to deal with that. And Perhaps I'm not- they have... I don't think we should. With I don't think we need to regulate dangerous chemicals in the home, especially when they're useful chemicals that are legal and whatever, right? Yep. But here's another article, and this is serious biz. So apparently, uh, people, you know, basically there weren't a lot of studies done in these e-cigarettes. People just sort of trusted, and I guess myself included, were stupid enough to trust that, like, yeah, it's just it's just water vapor coming out of there, right? It's it's just it's just a heating element. Right, and then water, and it burns all the chemicals and shit, and all of it goes 
you know, out one way, and then like the steam water vapor comes out the other. Yeah, well, end. it doesn't burn; it evaporates into a sure. mist, or that you can then inhale, well, hopefully to absorb in your lungs. Sure, but it turns out that uh, actually, it's not just water vapor coming out the other end. Like there is mad amounts of heavy metals and other nasty stuff that comes out the other end. Nicotine comes out the other end also. Yeah, so you know what? Fuck you guys. We're banning them in the same level that we ban cigarettes. Yeah, up until today, I was like, e-cigarettes, all good. So but if you st- if you've got starting used to- unless you can prove to me, right? Uh, that you have developed an e-cigarette to where truly only water vapor is coming out the other end and only poison goes out your end, then uh, as we had assumed it was until now. Well, these guys found out poison's coming out both ends, so fuck you. So you can't go you, poisoning people. If you whip who that shit out at a convention, you're a dick bag, and we're gonna kick you out. Yeah, I mean, like it's weird. Like last year, if someone whipped it out at a convention, I'd be like, all good. If someone whips it out at a convention I'm at tomorrow. I'm gonna say something, and if I'm staff, I'm gonna do something. Yup. So, and I'll bring out this article on you. Now, I still think everyone who does this sort of thing is stupid. Nicotine, it's just as stupid as someone who smokes. Yeah, but you know what? Go nuts! I'd rather you do this because at least you won't smell bad. And sure. I'll be, oh yeah, I'm not okay. It's it's if you're gonna smoke, it, like the choices are do this or smoke actual cigarettes. Yes, this is still a better choice for you to do. Right? But no, if you're gonna smoke something, smoke marijuana. Jesus Christ, kids. That's still. I mean, you're still poisoning, you know, people. But well, it depends. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's not. Not I, if you're gonna. <laughs> ideally, don't smoke shit. Yeah, vaporize it. <laughs> Brownies. <laughs> <laughs> Brownies is actually probably overall the best way. You are truly eh, it's only di- poisoning yourself, and you cannot possibly do anything to anyone else near you in any way. You know, there have been a, a couple of cases of people who have been aerosolizing Vodak and inhaling that. Well, I mean, there's oxygen bars too, right? Yeah. But it's not like you're... If you're if you're spraying that shit all over the rooms, so like you walk in the room and you get wasted, that's a problem. But if like you've got a little thing where you put it over your face and you push a button, and it goes. <laughs> I just imagine people in Russia like vodka hotboxing. Right. <laughs> if you just put a thing over your face and press a button, it goes and vodka comes out. It's like, well, you can't get anyone else drunk with that unless you put it over their face, <laughs> and which you you know shouldn't be doing because that's basically just assaulting someone. So I got kind of a this is a, an opinion. Uh, Twitter turned eight. It's eight years old now. A lot of articles about, oh my God, Twitter's eight. Ah. Uh. And there's a lot of articles. Well, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I feel extra old now. Sure. But there's a rumor going around that they're going to remove or minimize the at signs and hashtags. How could you possibly do that? What? By having the clients basically either auto can, like auto do it to where... Once you type at to type in someone's name, you'll never see the at sign in the responses. Oh, it'll just be like in the metadata? You'll just see a, yeah, you'll just see a highlighted name. Oh, well, that's cool. That's well, basically what Google Plus does is like you send things to and it's all metadata. You don't actually lose space in your tweet or your Google Plus message. Not that those have limited space, right? Yeah. But it's just who it's to and who it's from is, is all side metadata and you can now get your full 140 characters worth. I'm in favor of that. But at the same time, uh I'm conflicted for one reason, Mm -hmm. because I've seen other services and other things, programming languages, scripting, lots of things where you have some sort of syntax. And like HTML, a lot of people to this day don't know HTML. It's basically hidden from people who don't like go looking for it anymore. As a result, a lot of people in forums can't fucking type anything. (laughs) Uh, But my issue is just that if you remove them from the client view, and just replace it with hyperlinks, it sort of, I don't want to say dumbs down the interface or dumbs down the experience, because it's not at that level. It's like one step above dumbing down. Mm. Like, it removes a little bit of context, and it sort of removes that trigger for people who are young or people who don't use this technology a lot that, Mm. hey, maybe this tool is more powerful than I realize it is. Mm. It removes a little bit Mm. of the explicit prescriptive nature of this language. I mean, so if I write a tweet, if I write a tweet that says, hey, at Shazar, what's up? Is it going to just, rem- is it now that tweet is going to basically be rewritten instead of just say, hey, what's up? And there's an at Shazar sort of attached to it somewhere? That is likely what they're going to do. This so is you all can't, I mean, what if I'm like, you know, Shazar and, you know, went to the store today. And now everyone of my f- who's following me is just going to see went to the store today. And then the metadata will be like at Shazar. And that actually changes what I said. 
So that's a problem, right? Yep. You got to leave. It's it's okay. You just have to leave the name in the tweet, right? And you can save me those characters. That's cool because then I can type more, right? Um, but I guess, but you problem. still have to leave that in there, and you can put it in the metadata too. I'm, you know, <laughs> here's the thing: if you do it the way Facebook does it, where like I got an, a graphic here. That's what Facebook does. Where once you type it, it replaces it with this like iconic link to the exactly. Person's name. Yeah, that's fine. That's but cool. There is a an argument to be made. I'm not really making it strongly because I don't have a strong mm-hmm. opinion on this. That by removing the at sign from all the published tweets, the average non tech dumb user will forget or not read. They forget how to or not realize they can. Like, they won't know how implicitly to include someone else's name except via some sort of GUI. Well, if Facebook, you don't even need to type the at. You can just start typing someone's name, yep. and it's all good. So it's like, okay, good. Let's. Why should we have to type the at? Now I can use the at symbol to actually... There are a lot of times on Twitter, I want to use the at symbol to be an at symbol, and I can't because it's all trying to be an at symbol. Yeah, but if that's based on names, in, in Twitter, people's handles are usually something far different from their name. Right, like what if I start on Twitter? I if, type S. If, right, no, what if someone's uh, Twitter handle is like fruit and I'm like, man, ate some good fruit today. It'll be like at fruit. Yep. <laughs> and it's or, like, no. What if you what if you t- if I if it starts auto completing because the only reason I can I'm use sure, ads is that it auto completes. I'm sure Twitter engineers are not going to fuck it up and they have thought of these problems. Oh, I know. I'm just saying that in general, there is I think a- this is a case of you're almost leaning towards being one of you're trying you know that if you go farther with this, you're being like that guy who's like Twitter redesign, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, shit changes, deal with it. Oh no, I don't Who care. Cares? It doesn't affect me. I wonder That's definitely gonna happen though. As soon as they change it, that guy oh is gonna God. that guy is gonna come out again. He's gonna be like, they changed it. The change is bad. Can't, can't have use, any change. Can't use Office 9 to 8 because it's different from Office 9 to 7. Yeah. That guy. Eat a dick, that guy. Yep. I hope they do this just so that guy will get enraged again. <laughs> just to troll that guy. I want this to happen. But whenever you do design, just think about there's a fine line between streamlining and streamlining an interface and hiding useful complexity or useful declarative means of communicating. The ad sign is a is a very definite, declarative, prescriptive. Mm. It, it says very clearly, this is syntax that has meaning. It's a reserved syntax. By removing that from the outward view, like, if, for example, if I want to autocomplete, how does it know I start typing someone's name? Do I type at so that it knows to autocomplete? Facebook solved this problem. Yes. It's but- just really fucking smart because they have a zillion developers. Yep. And nothing you could ever program, but they got it. Done. Yeah, but at the same time, Facebook names are... Just because you don't are- understand how they do it. But I'm saying Facebook names are first name, last name. It doesn't matter. It does a little bit. You haven't used Facebook. It just fucking works. It knows. Yeah. I wonder if it'll work just work the same way on Twitter. I'm where sure the Twitter engineers, who also is another company with a, you know, a ton of really smart people working at it, will be able to develop equivalent technology. Well, here's the thing. What's interesting is that all this discussion is based on our rumor. Oh, uh, well then, who gives a shit? Yeah. So, things of the day. We were at Anime Boston. Our good friend Mike Tool stepped up his technology game. <laughs> okay. So, he presented his usual anime hell. And just to give you guys... Took a little trip to hell. Two hours. Yep. Uh, uh, Kipu to Jikoku. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who aren't animes, uh, anime hell is something special. So, I want to share with you just a little piece of hell. We can share this hell together. This is Shake Hands with Danger. Well, and then end is, up in hell. It is actually the remix of Shake Hands with Danger. Which so is I why it's actually, worth watching. So I will link to you, just for reference, the original Shake Hands with Danger. And just enjoy it for what it is. And let us never speak of this again. If you ever come to an anime con and you want to find us, if you see an anime hell, we'll probably be there in the front room half asleep. Mm. So... The show, we're going to talk about what to do and, like, you know, cloud shit goes down. But sometimes local shit goes down. And, you know, we always talk about backups. Yeah, have backups of your shit. But sometimes, right, you can't have a backup. For example, the most common case is you got an SD card in your camera. Yep. It's very rare that you have a camera that will take a picture and save that same picture to two SD cards simultaneously. Now, you might have the workflow of it's every very, time I get home, I dump everything right. from my SD card into my sure, stand. Sure, but only professionals will have, like, they'll take the HDMI output of the camera to, like, multiple recorders and shit. like Or like us with our mixer recording to the Marantz, which isn't on right now. 
Yeah, I think I ran out the battery at uh, Anime Boston. And also the computer. We, we're not doing it right now, but usually Geek Nice is recorded to two places at the same time, right? Yes, but also uh, Audition has really good backup Right, but what if you take photos in your camera or make a video and the SD card in there dies? You, in you the time between. And, you're, and you, even if you're super good about backups... You're you just you're just fucked right there, right? There's nothing you could have done about that without being super pro equipment. Yep. So, what do you do in this situation? Well, here is a someone posted a thing on Reddit titled "How I Lost Over a Hundred Picks to a Corrupted SD Card, but Was Able to Recover Most of Them." And the method he describes is not too bad, but in the comments, there's tons and tons of other people talking about all different ways to get you out of this situation, all kinds of different softwares you can get and use and other techniques. So this is a real problem that you can have and a case in which even someone following best practices will need to do some sort of data recovery. And this is going to be super useful to you at least one point in your life. So save it in your delicious or your somewhere until that day that will inevitably come. Now, you got to be careful because undeleted data can often lead to a cleaning that is true. <laughs> Speaking of which, the Book Club book is wool mm. with a capital W, like the stuff that comes off of the animal. The sheeps. Yep. Yep. Uh, the sweaters. I, I'm pretty far through The wool through it now. over your eyes, which is what the book is talking about. But also the wool used to perform the cleanings, the cleanings that are part of the wool. I think that's steel wool. Uh, yeah, it's still wool. Maybe. You know. said steel wool. <laughs> You're going to tell me that the, the steel, metaphor the does steel not extend wool, that far. The steel wool actually have even one piece of sheep in it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that book is uh, exactly what Scott Scott's bells went off, and I got the same bells. <laughs> we'll talk about it when we do the book club book. If you're not reading that book, uh, the book club has a ton of other books we talked about, including the two official books of Geek Nights, The Prince of Nothing and Player of Games. Yep. I think few books will unseat those two. Uh, probably not. Uh, other meta things. Anime boosting is over. Yes, so we done. We done. Until next year. So... We're gonna maybe upload a video or we'll other see. Stuff, so uh, maybe. I don't want to. I don't want to waste time on this. We'll talk about it tomorrow. You know the Animu Day, but Anime Boston has some ridiculous security theater that made it such a pain in the ass that we didn't video most of our panels mm -hmm. because the city of Boston is full of scared, horrible people, or at least the people in charge of the the group that makes the decisions like this are scared and horrible people. So we had to get searched and or metal detector pat downs just to go into and out of the con. So we tried to be in the con as little as possible and bring as few electronic pieces of equipment for them to manhandle as possible. Mm. Uh, some cool listeners got some video of us. One guy. Yes. I don't even know if he's a listener. I think he was just a guy. And I got video of a panel because it wasn't actually in the convention center. It was in the hotel. He so, also got video of that panel, so we can combine his video with our video to make a two-angle video. Yep, so we'll see. I'll get around to that. But uh, unless that policy changes, we're never videoing stuff at Anime Boston again. So yeah. you got to see us live if you want to see our anime panels. At least at Anime Boston. Yeah, what other anime uh, cons do we go to? Other, well, con other conventions are coming up, so not... Zenkai Con! Well, oh, hold on. Not this weekend, but the weekend after that is the Mocha Fest in New York City. We'll be there. We'll go there as usual, just like a one-day in-and-out deal, as always. Though, uh, as a side note, it's interesting that none of the people we know who usually are at these things are going to have tables. Mocha is having some drama. Who knows how long that will go, but it's been a good ride. We've there, been going to might... that shit since, like, 06, 07. Yeah, back in the Puck Building, so... but might be trouble this year. <laughs> who knows? Um, other things, the week after that, the greatest convention, except for PAX Prime. Yeah. PAX, PAX East. East. We will be presenting at least one panel, the one that is announced Friday, 1 p.m., in the Badger Theater. Otherwise, we'll be enforcing and playing Netrunner. Why? And such. No one will game with you. Come see that. If we it's do about another. It's about exactly what you think it's about. It's possible that we might do another panel that's not yet on the schedule. If that's on the schedule, you'll be able to see that too. Who knows when? Yep. Or, or if. So not too long after that, April 25th, 26th, 27th, we will be at Zenkai Con for two of those days. Whoa. We're doing a bunch of panels. I don't think the schedule's published yet. Don't so. go to Zenkai Con unless you really, really, really like anime Zenkai cons. Zenkai Con is worth going to in one of two cases. Anime is your fucking thing. And you have money. And you love those. That you're, like, you're a cosplay person. You love doing those anime cons for, the, you know, for all that they are. Or you like anime 
And you live near the convention center. Super near the convention. If you live nearby to where you could just go there for a day, pretty much any con like this is worth going yeah, to. Zenkai Con is not worth traveling or hoteling for. If you are well, a person, we're traveling and hoteling. If for you it. are a person like you know who is like us, but not a panel doer. What I thought it was near <laughs> or Philly. a staffer. Apparently, it's ninety minutes away from Philly. Yeah, it's out in the sticks. Yeah, where the fuck is this place? I mean, Philly's already the sticks. This isn't like the twigs. The st- <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tried. To, I clicked on the link that tells you how far away, and I got the requested page slash droop slash node slash eighty seven could not be found. Okay, <laughs> sorry, Zenkai Khan. Sorry. We're doing a bunch of We're panels just, We got to be honest. We, I mean, the reason we go to Zenkai Con is because our friends staff slash run it. And that you know that shows what kind of people we are. Yep. If we did not do that, I, I, all right. There are if three... that was not the case, it would not be on our radar. I'm gonna, we're there the are jerk. anime cons just as minor as this one that are closer to us. That we there do not are even... three ways to get us to come to your convention. One, impress us. Two, pay us. Three, be friends with us. Right. That's it. Then we feel some sort of obligation to go. Four, if I can get to your con via the New York City subway and I don't have I to... Would, I would go to your con by Metro North Railroad if, it was one, if I could go and come back in the same day. All right. It, you have to be connected to the greater mass transit region of New York City. I'm not City. using Jersey Transit, though. No. That, well, I said New York City. Yeah. <laughs> Path doesn't count. Right. If I have to use a PATH train, this ain't happening. <laughs> or an Amtrak. That's not happening either. Yeah, no Amtrak. Uh, Bolt bus, maybe, if it's a really good con. Yep. Uh, I'm going to be in Paris the week before PAX East, so any cool nerds hanging out, I might be able to hang out with you, though. And I guess there won't be any uh, Geek Nights that week. Yeah, no, ge- no Geek Nights before PAX. Why don't PAX. we do Geek Nights Paris? Get your PAX going, your uh, Skype going on. We could try that. Might be able to work that out. Why, why don't we do a Google Hangout, right? <laughs> we'll do a live Google, Google Hangout. It'll become a Google Hangout on air on YouTube. Maybe I'll do that. And then Every you time can be I'm like, you could be all like Eiffel Tower, and I'll be all Empire State Building. Je suis le de pomme de terre. Je ma- parle français. And I'll oh. be all, I'll be all mine is bigger than yours. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited to be going to Paris now that Paris's pollution is almost as bad as Beijing's. That's uh, is that's, that really true? It's really bad. I, I didn't think there were factories in Paris. Paris actually is having some serious problems lately, and they've banned half of car traffic, like a lot of other cities do. Good to cut down on the pollution. Okay. They do it even odd on the license plates now, I think. Bring me back some breads. Yeah, that'll that'll make it through customs. It's just bread. Uh, yeah, that'll make it through me sitting on a plane with it. Bring back uh, yeast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to transport organisms via <laughs> international travel. Anyway. Also, it is so fucking hard to get flights to and from yeah. Boston. Jesus. Just to finish off the meta moment uh, quickly... You can find us everywhere on the internet that people are doing things. Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. even IRC, Twitch, YouTube, every place. G-plus. Our website, frontrowcrew.com. You should go to those places, go to our forum, go everywhere that we are on the internet and be with us on the internet where we truly live. Not in Paris or New York, but the internet. So i uh, kind of worried that Flickr is going to die. It'll die sometime. I think it might be sooner than later because on one hand... Well, I mean, some years. Well, I remember a couple years ago when Yahoo... Well, not a couple... God, whenever Yahoo bought it, I remember thinking right then and there, this is going to die. And I remember backing up everything I'd ever uploaded because I was so afraid that Flickr was going to die then. Yeah, I've already got the backups, you know, in terms of like, uh, you know, Lightroom and whatnot. So I'm set. Yeah, but now the thing is... Uh, I figured with the new CEO and with Yahoo trying to double down on stuff, I figured maybe Flickr, which is one of their only worthwhile products, Mm -hmm. I figured they would actually invest in it. So far, they have not invested in it. The API is barely responsive and barely available. And most tellingly, when I complain about problems on Twitter and I at them, they never respond. They probably just don't have a social media person managing uh, that account. Yeah, uh, sign number one, your company is fucked. You don't have a social media person managing <laughs> that shit. I'm not, too, I mean, I'm not, I mean, yes, Yahoo may I add, abandon dude. or kill Flickr. It is somewhat more likely than many other things, and it is a bigger, more popular service than many other dude, things. Dude, I have complained about way smaller things than Flickr, and even without adding them, the companies involved mm. find me on right. Twitter and tweet at me. But I'm not worried about it, right? Because, look, Little Old Delicious, right, was abandoned by Yahoo, and some other company bought it, resurrected it, and it's still running, even though I'm guaranteed there's no way that's making money or anything. I don't know if they can make money off of Flickr. Flickr like, is so big and so popular. If Yahoo it? bails on it, someone will buy it, and that person will be easily able 
to make it successful. I worry that Flickr's business model might be untenable. The worst case scenario. I mean, for I pay Flickr. for Flickr, guys. That says a lot. There are not many things that I will pay to use Listen, on the internet. The worst case scenario, if Flickr goes out, it'll become a Google Reader situation where all these competitors will show up, and you'll be able to like click a button and migrate your Flickr to them, and you'll be all set. My trouble is that Flickr's appeal is that I can upload basically the most gigantic right. images. That is, I mean, really, I would much rather use... Uh, Picasa? Like, yeah, Picasa, Google, whatever. The it has reason, the same, it, Picasa has shit at least, functionality. Well, I mean, when I started using Flickr, Flickr was the only game in town, right? But nowadays, I think Google's a little better, but uh, the advantage of Flickr is that for a very small amount of money, like Libsyn, I can upload infinity, high-res photos... All I want. And have I have a camera that, I mean, my RAWs are 20 to 30 megabytes each. Right. And it's like, I'm not one of those photographers who's only uploading low-res JPEGs because they care about someone stealing. I'm all Creative commons which is another great feature of Flickr. They were like one of the first places to be all Creative commons -y. Yeah. So, you know, I would much rather use the Google stuff, but I mean, Google lowered their prices recently, yep, actually, but to be more reasonable. With the number of images They're I They're not take, as reasonable as Flickr if you want to do all your photos at ridiculous high-res also, just Picasso's because you're a nice guy. sharing and all this stuff just kind of suck. Yeah. Like, they never... Flickr actually built all that stuff out ages ago. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do when these services die? I mean, I got a Wikipedia page of the list of everything that Google has ever killed. <laughs> it's, it's substantial. Well, I think the thing to remember, right, is that what is the cloud? And the best way to describe the cloud to people who don't know, or even to yourself if you think you know, is... Whenever, say a sentence with the word the cloud in it and use the word the cloud properly. Then rewrite the sentence and replace the cloud with the words someone else's computer. <laughs> so it's, yeah. like, it's like, yeah, all my photos are stored in the cloud by Flickr. All my photos are stored in someone else's computer run by Flickr. <laughs> so you got to get into this. You got to really think about uh, my stuff is stored on a bunch of other people's computers who don't know right. each other and kind of hate each other. Right. So you just have to remember the, the simplest answer is if your shit is on someone else's computer... It's, it's all on Cassius's computer. Yeah. If all your shit is on someone else's computer, you got to have backups on your computer. And well, then no, all no, no. You've got to have backups on your attached storage that itself is backed up redundantly Right, locally. but I mean, on a computer that you own, right, somehow, right? You, that's where you have to have things. And sometimes it's okay to back things up on someone else's computer from someone else's computer, like, oh, back up my Flickr on Amazon S3. That's a good idea, yep. right? Because the odds of both of those going down... At the same time. ...really low, right? So it's like, no matter which I have to migrate from or to, I'll be able to, you know, have my data will be somewhere on someone's computer, and I'll be able to copy it to someone else's computer, and then if they go down, I'll copy it to someone else's computer. So no matter what, my data will be on someone's computer. Yep, Snorlax will never die. Right. But... When it comes to cloud services, the best way to think about whether or not you have to worry about a service actually disappearing is, one, is it a service that you envision someone could make money off of if they weren't stupid? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, Google Reader, you cannot make money, at least enough money to matter, from RSS readers. Mm -hmm. RSS, we've talked about why it's kind of dead. Yep. Uh, you can make money off of photo sharing. In fact, photography is getting a big boost with these micro four thirds. Yeah, and there's plenty. There's like this other, well, there's lots of other. <laughs> photography, cameras are not selling. Uh, but Cameras aren't in general. Photography but, is a huge boost from yes. phones yeah, in general. Yeah, that too. But there's plenty of photography services, new ones all the time, because, yeah, you can make money with a good one. See Instagram. See, I guess that 500px is, is the new hotness as well, right? So... There will always be somewhere to put photos. Yep. Photos will or always like exist. Or like Amazon. Amazon, you know, AWS. Yeah, they could just turn off their computer and you're fucked. But you know what? If the, if Amazon shut down tomorrow, you're fucked Netflix along... Netflix is also fucked. Yeah, you're fucked along with everybody else. You're fucked along with people who have way more money and way more guns than you. Right. So you're good. You're, in, so, you're sailing in a boat with badasses. They're yeah, protecting you. You want to be in a boat if where... That si if that ship sinks... They're sinking too, so they ain't letting that happen. Yeah, the Google readership was like, <laughs> was basically just like a barge of refugees slowly sinking in the Pacific. Right, just try to imagine the service as a boat, see who's on the boat, see how awesome the boat is. Google's like a flotilla of aircraft carriers and battleships. Right, and so it's like, Google, do they make any money on Gmail? Yeah, they do. But imagine if they didn't. 
What, what kind of boat would you imagine Gmail being? It would be this massive, luxurious cruise ship that like billions of people are on all at once having an amazing but party. But meanwhile, Google Lively was like this dinghy that sank and no one noticed. Right. Google Page Creator. I don't even know what Google Lively is. Oh my God, Scott. Some of these are great. Google Ideas, Google I know what Google Ideas uh, is. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Google uh, Lively is a 3D animated chat program. Never. Launched. Oh my God. Launched, I never knew about this. Scott, launched July. 2008, closed December 2008. Yeah, I could have figured. I could have <laughs> predicted the year was going to be the same year. Uh, Google Hello. Never heard of that. Allowed a user to send images across the internet. What? What? <laughs> Do we have that? It's called the internet. Google Buzz. <laughs> I know what that is. I remember Buzz. <laughs> I have a Google Wave. Squared. Remember Sets? Google Sets is gone apparently. Oh, uh, Google Sets is really useful. Google Sets was the best. All we did was type a bunch of anime in that would recommend other anime that we'd like. Google Lists, I think, was the same thing as sets or different? Uh, that was a different thing. Okay. Google Nall. Yep. I Google know Wave. Know what that is, yep. Yep. Google Picnic. Google I don't know what Building that is. Maker. I don't know Mebo, what that is. Mebo. Google I'm, Latitude. Me, oh, wait, but Mebo, they bought Mebo? Yeah. But Mebo.com is where you go and you can... It, Could wait. discontinue June 6, 2013. <gasps> Mebo. Mebo. <laughs> no. It's not Google, but remember Beluga basically got bought by Facebook and then fucked to death. Oh, I guess that's what happened to Mebo. No, not yeah. Mebo, no. Yeah, Google Fast Flip. I have no idea what the hell that is. Google Reader. All right, I not, don't know who used that. We're not going to sit here I and could, read all This whole these. episode could be me reading these. <laughs> Let's not have it be that. Yeah. Okay, so actual technical things you have to do, right? So you've been uploading your photos to Flickr, right? Yep. Ha and maybe you've deleted them locally, right? We're going to assume the worst case scenario. What Which actually I had for right. a lot of my photos. Right. So we're going to assume the worst case scenario here. Your shit is only on Flickr, right? What do you do? Well, Flickr has an API. So as of today, you can actually get little scripts and programs on the internet that will actually download your photos from Flickr to your local computer. With the metadata, with, at least as much as it can get. Yeah, with the tags, the titles, all that stuff. So you need to find one of these things by Googling. I hope you have those skills and run it. Then, from now on, anytime you upload stuff to Flickr, just think of that as sharing the photo. Keep all your photos locally, following all good backup procedures, which we will not discuss because that's another show that we've already done. Yep. Uh, okay, so that's, that's pretty simple right there, right? Oh, but wait, Flickr actually goes down one day. Now what do you do? Well, yep, I get to reshare all your shit somehow. Right, you need to pick a different service that does the same thing and use their API to re-upload everything with that metadata to them. Also, you'll probably get some warning that Flickr's about to go down, and you can rerun that Flickr backup script to get that metadata. Also, you can maybe set that up to run weekly or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, I've tried. I set up my two-way sync. So, I, so basically, in Lightroom, to give you an example of this workflow, to keep myself independent, I create sets in Lightroom. Lightroom is the authoritative source. Yeah, me too. I will create separate sets in the Flickr integration piece, and I'll put photos into that. Mm -hmm. So I only put the photos into that that I'm publishing. I don't put everything in there. Mm -hmm. And then those sync up and down. So if I fuck with the photo on Flickr, that metadata comes back into Lightroom. Yep. If I delete the photo, photo on Flickr, it deletes it from that set in Lightroom. Yeah. Lightroom is fancy Adobe Creative Cloud software, but there are plenty of other software packages you can get that Dude, do Dude, the first time things. when Yahoo was buying Flickr, a lot of people sold like $10 application that will download everything. Yeah. You don't really need an application if you know how to write a program or run a script or do what you know there's free things there's all kinds of ways to do it all right the internet will tell you how to do it there'll be facts overnight right. something's not going to go down suddenly and disappear but there are well, other if issues it does, that's a separate problem there are other issues for example on your blog you've had all these links pointing at various photos on your Flickr, and now those are not working links anymore what do you do about that there's unless you have a really advanced CMS mm -hmm. content management system, you're basically fucked. Yeah, it's gonna be. It is possible, but it's a huge pain in the ass. Basically, what you need to do is look at the stuff you've backed up from Flickr, figure out what the URLs were, right? Then search your database or whatever for any links to those photos. Then, when after you upload to the new replacement service that you're using. Figure out what the new URLs are, match the new URLs up with the old URLs, and edit all of them. Because And it's up to Flickr to maybe do some redirecting. You can't control that. Flickr's not going to redirect shit. Right. So, eh. Um, other services, right, say like a Delicious, you don't really have to do anything. Cause you could just 
you know, do your backups of delicious once in a while, and you don't really need a replacement ah. service for that so much. Well, you're getting into, I mean, a b- web browser bookmarks are the replacement for that service. Oh, that's not a good replacement. It's at all, better than nothing, I guess. But I mean, plus the, Chrome syncs. I mean, the download you get from Delicious is basically like a big HTML or XML file, or whatever, and it's like it's just useful on its but own. But thus, thus, you're getting, you're, you've kind of, you've danced around the issue. Here's the key. Don't use services that don't have APIs. Uh, or don't have backups, right? Like Twitter only somewhat more recently allowed you to actually get your, an archive of all your tweets. And Gmail also allows this now too. Put a reminder in like your reminder thing, because some of these have to be done manually by clicking, that you should do that every you know week, month, whatever. I'm doing it every month, and I'm putting them in like S3 and Google Drive and, other save, and my local drive, my local NAS. You know, safe places to store stuff. Yep. Um, what else, what other kind of situation might have a hard one to deal with might be something like YouTube, right? Well, again, someone can make money with that. Sure, I don't think YouTube is very, YouTube is probably the least. Well, but likely it's, it's to one die. of those situations, though, kind of like Flickr, where if I didn't have YouTube available, I guess I could use like Vimeo or something. Mm. But, but what if Vim- Vimeo is something that could die? Yeah. Maybe, that's why possibly. Well, the, the trouble is that's they make why money, but it's possible I, because you know it's, not, it's more likely than YouTube dying. We're pro, but we're not pro in the sense that like when we like we do these videos, right? Like Geek Nights presents or our panel lectures. I have a ton of raw video and the projects, but eventually, once I've made a lecture and it's done, I'm never going to use that footage again. I do delete a lot of the original source material, so I could. It just takes up too much room. I so don't. I, I can't back all that up. Yeah, you know, I could. It's not worth the effort and/or expense. So then I render like the final video and I upload it to YouTube. But then I usually delete the rendered Whoa, thing. Whoa, no, no, once no, no I do YouTube not. See, Scott is successful. I delete the forty gigabytes of like <laughs> B-roll and raw masters. But what I do is I'll usually usually render out a watchable version like one i could just watch on my computer and then i render out the one that i upload to youtube the one that's like a 50 or 100 megabit per second it's like a 40 gigabyte bullshit file mm. so just crazy crazy high quality and that's what i upload to youtube mm-hmm. but that way i have a usable video and the highest quality master i'm gonna get um why are you rendering a video it's like 100 megabits per second when your source raw isn't 100 megabits per yeah, well, second yeah well i said that was an example actually <laughs> what i do is i render it at youtube's recommended they recommend between 20 and 50 mm-hmm. as just what you should but upload but if your source at. but i mean like your camera what's the bit rate that it records at yeah well it depends so on the video so if you if you're if you're rendering at like 20 but your camera's only i mean most cameras are not recording more than like eight or yep. not. They're not much at all. Right. It's crazy that the GH4 does like 100 or maybe in some cases 200. That's ridiculous. Yep. The key is I keep the highest quality master I could get mm-hmm. and I keep that forever. It's on my NAS up there and it's also backed up somewhere else. Mm hmm. In fact, I have a rolling archive. I have all these. All right, we're trying. Not, we're not talking about just re- you know regular backups. We already talked about. Right? Yeah, but I. The point is, I keep all the masters. So if I had to, I could take the final versions of every video we've ever made mm-hmm. and upload them all to another site mm. if I needed to. But I do not keep the material I would need to remake those videos clean. Another good strategy is to. You know, it's like there's lots of all these services and they all have APIs that need to be talked to, but nothing is ever quite as good as just a Linux computer, which is like the can do anything, right? So getting like a very small, very cheap uh, virtual private server, like from Linode, DigitalOcean, or some other hosting provider, even Amazon EC2, you know, some hosting provider that you're pretty sure is not going to die, right? It's just a Linux computer. So it can always be replaced by going to another hosting provider, right? It's like if Linode goes down, I can go to Amazon. If it, you know, it's like there's always going to be someone selling Linux machines. So then what you do is you create on that machine, that very tiny, very inexpensive server, all these scripts that are basically doing all these backups, like backing up the Flickr, backing up you know, the Gmails, back, you know, backing up Delicious. And that basically is handling all that biz for you all the time. And if anything ever happens to it, well, you can just... It's a Linux machine, so you can Hell, easily if copy you have FIOS, it somewhere else. No problem. If you problem. have FIOS, put it in your house. Just build a desktop computer. Put it, you know, something you're not going to use on a daily basis. Get a shit ton of cheapo, like, two terabyte hard disks. Ma- cheapo magnetic ones. Yeah, just 5,400 RPM bullshit. Just throw them in there in some sort of, like, RAID 10, because whatever. And then just have that sit with your FIOS, constantly scheduled archive backups of everything. Mm-hmm. And just let it run. Let it hum. 
There are other things you might not think about backing up. This is the, it's the real hard problem is not something going down and surprising you. It's something you didn't realize that you wanted to back up, right? For that, like data that you have, you didn't really like think about. Like if you use Spotify or Netflix and you like, you like musics, like you star some music, you make some playlists. Yep. You, uh, you're, you've rated like 4,000 movies in Netflix because I learned something disturbing actually yesterday. Mm -hmm. Apparently... And I haven't verified this myself. If you cancel the DVD part of Netflix, you can't see DVD-only movies in the interfaces anymore, and all your reviews of them are, and your star ratings are no longer accessible, and they'll never be recommended to you. What if you pay again? Will it come back? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I got I to do some investigative journalism. Well, on I canceled that front. Netflix altogether, so I lost everything. Yeah, I've At thought about canceling it. Uh, but yeah, stuff like that, or. Another good example would be like your, not your Gmail, which is obvious, but like your Google chat history, all your hangouts, every hangout you've ever done. Well, that's just in my history. Mm -hmm. It's right there in my email. Well, it's in the same interface. It's in the same right. web screen. But it used to be, it used to not be, right? And maybe, yeah, you know maybe you've got like an IRC channel. You got a bot like backing that shit up. Well, you know what, kids? Everything anyone's ever chatted. As I said in the backups episode, I have an archive of every online digital conversation of text typing I have ever had since 1996. Mm -hmm. Everyone, every I am, every email. Yep. So take that, people. Mm -hmm. The first thing I ever said to Scott was, hey, I'm that long-haired guy. You want to meet at Gracie's for dinner at 6 before we go to the D&D &D thing? <laughs> that was the first message I ever sent to Scott. Mm -hmm. I looked it up ahead of time of this show. <laughs> Uh, what kind of other things do I use that where I'm storing my information? It's mostly on reviews. someone else's computer. It's mostly the th the throwaway comments, like I review something on a site, and I've reviewed enough things to where now I have this sort of history of recommendations mm. and reviews, like the list of restaurants I order food from on Grubhub. If Grubhub disappeared, I would not remember the names of most of the restaurants that I order food from mm. online that I've never visited in person. Mm. There are some other. Like, things, I don't even know where they are. Right. There are some other things that might be kind of tricky. For example, Steam. Right. On Steam, you should go to every Steam game in your list, and I don't know if you should necessarily like install every Steam game just in case Steam goes away. Right. But maybe go through and get all the keys because you can do that. You can say, "Show me the CD keys from this game." Right. And get them all into like a text file somewhere. That way, you know, if the game, if Steam disappears, you can go find the installer for that game, install it legitimately and not, you know, piratey and spyware, ma malware e, and just paste your CD key in and the game will work, right? Even when Steam is gone, you'll still be able to get the installer from somewhere. Yeah, it's hard to say because at the same time, if Steam went down, uh, it would piss off the kinds of people <laughs> who would make sure that every one of those games was immediately available on some right. sort of pirated fashion. I mean, but if, like, if you're really paranoid about something like that, you know, your option is basically get a giant hard drive and install every Steam game you have on uh, all at once. And yep. like, unlike me, where I only install the ones I'm sort of playing. In recently. fact, if you're extra paranoid, then put the computer you downloaded them into into offline mode and then hibernate it. But anytime you buy a new game. You got to turn it on, download the game, and hibernate yep. it again. And then, you, and then you keep VMs images of those hibernated states, sure. so you could theoretically play those games forever, no matter what. Mm. Mm -mm. That's not a bad idea, actually. It's a lot of effort. I'm not going to do it. Right? It's if really Steam goes down. I'm just going to rabble about it. Yeah, it's really annoying. You know, some of these things don't have like a backup. Uh, you know, a way to do something about ah, well, it. well, that's the thing. The real future is that. Normal people don't know or care, whatever. But if you're nerdy and you're smart, try to only rely upon services that give you an API and or are federated. Mm -hmm. If a service is not one or both of those things, you should assume that it'll disappear while you're still alive. Yeah. Well, I also, mean, there's a trend lately of people doing things they want to disappear, like Snapchat and stuff. Yeah, right? ephemeral communication. Even though those things, actually, my only interest in those services is making clients that save everything anyway, because fuck you. Right, well, I mean, people already can just take screenshots and do, yep. right? It's not a big deal, but it's, you know, whatever. Yeah, thing is, it's I great think for the person. It's really great for the company that runs it because they basically don't have to store any. It's so I know. We, they're basically like, "Hey, let's just run a shitty service where we get so cheap because we don't have to buy a million hard drives." Brilliant, brilliant, super easy infrastructure compared to anyone else. So, if I had to guess, things that are gonna die in the foreseeable near future, like mm -hmm. years out, Google Voice is definitely gonna disappear. Well, that's for sure. Uh, 
I, I wonder what's going to happen to Delicious in the long term. I don't. Delicious, you know. It costs so little to run is the only reason I think it'll right? hang on. And, like, people are working on it, and they bought it. I'm, it's like, but is it, you know, it's it's a, to- a coin toss. I, I think, think it's pa- got better odds than Google Voice, though. I think Pandora's going to die, and I think Spotify's not going to make it either. I don't know. Those might be the kind of things where, uh, like, Sirius XM Radio, it'll get merged, right? Yeah. I they'll, think that's what could they'll happen. Merge, there'll but be like, like one thing that takes, like RDO, all three of those. Well, I'll say this. All your metadata in all those kinds of services will probably die unless yeah. you happen to pick the one that everyone merges into. That's why I don't put metadata into those services. I'm actually using uh, Amazon Cloud Player, and that's, yeah. a pretty, that's a pretty good one because basically all it does is I'm actually using local iTunes, which is super safe, and then you basically mirror that to Amazon Cloud Player. Um, I think City Bike's going to die. <laughs> That's not a cloud service. It's a physical service. <laughs> sure. I think it'll die, though. Uh, what else? I don't know. I mean, Flickr is probably better odds than Delicious, right, of, of being safe. Yeah. But um, at the same time, I don't trust Yahoo. No. Um, but yeah, anything that's like a tiny startup has really bad odds, uh, unless it's been, in, you know, even if it gets bought by someone huge, it's like Beluga dead, right? Yeah. It's like that group me thing. That's as unstable as Beluga was, right? Maybe a little bit more stable. And those two services are not likely to have competitor replacements because Google Hangouts and or Facebook combined cover the use cases. Yep. Um, you know, there's, there's just, uh, what else is there? I guess uh, Adobe Behance is going to be say. I mean, Adobe's basically just going to... Behance is on this kind of upswing lately, which is right. interesting. And Adobe Creative Cloud Storage, it's like, that's one of those things where it, I don't think too many people are using it compared to other things. I've never uploaded anything to it. Right. I've used it a tiny, tiny bit. But, I should use it more, actually, because it's free. I already pay for the right. Adobe stuff. But like because it's something that people pay a zillion dollars for and Adobe just gives it to you for free... It's the kind of thing that will stick around, likely. Um, you know, probably even more likely than Flickr to well, stick around. I think professional tools that cost significant money are a lot safer. Like even I said, if they Amazon, don't have, a, it's AWS. like they don't need to have a lot of users to stick around, right? Yeah. Well, also like Adobe Creative Cloud, because people that, are paying for it, even if they're not using if, it. If all the things around that go down. That affects entire industries. Mm-hmm. Industries of professionals who use that software on a daily basis. I'm using it right now for Geek Nights. Looking at Audition. <laughs> this has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brand OK for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. No, I'm genetically superior to everybody. <laughs> we don't well, need to remind Scott, everyone with of your, that. With your double veins. That's right. Your double veins. Scott's double veins. I got, ex- I got two sets of veins in case I get. <laughs> I won't get a heart attack. In the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like our friend Pete, like he went to get hearing testing, and they were like, "Yeah, you have hearing loss." Well, he in all knew these he areas. was. He knew he was like almost deaf yes, in one ear. But you know what happened? They gave him a hearing aid. And it's you know an what? awesome hearing aid. It transformed his life. It's got like Bluetooth and shit. And so in general, my and advice you can to also you, turn people off. You'd be like, oh, I feel like being deaf again. I don't have to hear you yapping. Off. If you're a nerd, uh, you should try to augment your senses if you can. If you have kind of okay vision, why not have perfect vision? Yep. If you have kind of okay hearing, why not have perfect hearing? If you're poor and Obama didn't help you with his Obamacare. Yeah. Well, so at least know that you have a bad hearing. And <laughs> Buy bad some bootleg hearing aids from China. Move to Europe where they have universal health care. Something like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so news is. So, news is. Uh, you know, up until now, I mean, you know, it's it's not uh, you know secret like that we are anti-smoking and such. Yeah. Right? Uh, now, again, just to be very clear, I don't care that it's bad for you. <laughs> I only care that you smell like... A dead rat. I also care that it's bad for me if you smoke near me. Ah, but bad for me. It's Monday.
Sunday, March 24th, 2014. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, we're back from Anime Boston, and we're talking about internet services that are dead. What to do about it? Let's Let's do this. So a while ago, a beep started happening in my apartment. Oh, wasn't it the Fios thing? It was the Fios thing. But uh, for a while, you know, Scott pointed out that I opined at length on multiple Geek Nights episodes in the past that the best way to annoy someone is to make a device that intermittently beeps and is self-powered and hide it in their apartment. It's called the Annoyotron. Think Geek sells it. Exactly. So I investigated and pretty quickly discovered that my Fios had, it's, it has a backup battery and that it battery has to. had died. Uh, yeah, so here's where it gets complicated. So... I silenced the alarm because I didn't give a fuck and I'd deal with it later. Uh, I've I heard s- it go off, though, recently. Uh, yes. What I confirmed is that everyone else's Fios batteries in this building appear to also be dead. No. Oh. So it's beeping in other apartments as well, and none of those people probably notice it. Mm. That's my guess. So I Googled around a little bit online, and... It works. This is a good test to do because... Uh, like those people who say they get Wi-Fi sickness, do the same thing. Say, all right, go in the other room where you can't see, and I'm going to turn the router on and off, and you tell me whether it's making you sick or not. Yep. And they won't be able to tell you the moment you turn it on. Even better, if you tell them you turned it on, they'll start faking all the symptoms. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, if you have Fios, go check and see if or the- any. Actually, this will be the same with pretty much any sort of fiber service. I just don't know if other services besides Fios might just replace your battery and not be assholes. Uh, I don't think anyone else will replace the battery. You know what either. else you could do, right? Is you could just go buy a bunch of the batteries and re- go around the building selling them to people for a lot of money. I could put on overalls and put a name tag on that doesn't actually say I'm from Verizon's it Fios. It says Verizon no, Goose. No, it says I'm a fan of Verizon Fios. Uh, That's free speech. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> just trademark infringement if you got their logo, though. Yeah, I- if I use it with for purposes of defrauding and to... Because you, you can use a logo for fair use in certain But the thing is, you too. actually wouldn't be defrauding people. You would just be you're selling them the legitimate battery for a legitimate legitimate problem that they do have yep and for a actually reasonable helping them, price you're just selling it for an overcharge $70. which every store does i mean every that's what stores do you're basically being a store so what's illegal about that yeah door-to-door salesman's coming back right. so kids if you have fios go check and see if a big red light is on that says replace battery if it is and you didn't know that until now your hearing sucks mm. yeah yep you should go get a hearing test. I mean, just in general. Every, it's like people go get eye tests, even if they don't have eye problems, right? Yeah, because you might not know you have glaucoma. L- like, like I was, for real. I, yeah, I was talking actually with the uh, chair of Connecticut in Anime Boston, because like, his, uh, his wife told him to go to the eye doctor, even though his eyes are awesome, like mine. Yep. And it's just like, yeah, but who gets a hearing test? Even if you go to get physicals, like when you're a kid and you go get physicals, they always give you the hearing test. Like, which ear did you hear that in and shit? But adults tend not to get hearing tests, and you should probably get one at least once in a while, every few years or What something. I don't understand, really, is why my hearing is still so great, because uh, I've abused my ears quite a bit I've over the years. I've abused them moderately, but it's like going in the subway, that sort of thing. Yeah, I wear, well, you realize now, for the last, since we moved into help. the city, I wear my edematics when I'm in the subway yeah. every day. Edematics help. Yeah. But, yeah. But seriously, like I, I think other people, it's like we, yeah, it's like we abuse our ears somewhat. We go to a concert once in a while. We listen to a loud music once in a while, right? But the other people are like the people who have bad hearing problems are really who, oh, who don't have it for some other reason, right? The people who physically damage their ears with loud noise, they are doing way, way worse than we are. It's like we're doing it in moderation. You know what? It might be genetic. They're like, ODing. It might be like the thing where if you make it to yes, I am. We already a lot of people are having this problem, uh, both that their neighbors don't know and aren't replacing the battery, or they try to get the battery replaced. And guess what? Verizon won't replace it. You have to pay money and buy your own battery. Okay. That's hidden in the Fios terms of service. So if you have Verizon Shouldn't Fios... should you just recharge that shit? Uh, yes, but it's like a UPS. Eventually those batteries stop working. It's only been there not that long. Since 2009. It's not that long. That's a lot. You realize, Scott, UPS batteries are usually warrantied for one year. Yeah. So, it's yeah. Awful. So, uh, I have to buy a battery, but I'll do that later. So, at work today, 
We're in a conference room, and I wasn't in on Friday because of and you heard Boston. It did. I heard that did. No one noticed it. So I just waited all day. It happens every now and then. No one notices it. So finally, I asked everyone, did anyone else hear that beeping noise? Nobody. They probably bad hearing. Uh, yeah, I'm convinced that nobody has good hearing except me. We, maybe we're the you. only we, like we're the only people who can like hear the TVs. They go. Dee. Oh my! I remember that experiment. We did the single blind test of can you hear the TV? That old TV, the 74 color RCA. And I recall that both of us could hear it outside with right. the door closed. It's like we went outside the room and we said, "All right, you don't tell us if it's on or off, right? We'll tell you if it's on or off." And we're like, "It's on. It's yep. off." They turned it on and we said, "It's on." <laughs> and they turned it off. And we said, "It's off." And then it's like it was up to them to decide whether it's on or off. And you know this 